Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update, and I'm going to fly through some big updates that occurred today. We'll have a look first at the market, but then there's a statement about the digital asset XRP that's coming from the newest board member of Ripple. It is amazing. And also, I want to comment on a video clip that I'll share with you. This is from the uh, general manager of Ripple, Monica Long. Uh, we are really, really lucky as XRP holders, and I will explain. And also, the XRP use case that just might get heard from the judge presiding over the SEC versus Ripple case. Yeah, I think that should be amazing. And how about some details that are coming from the court case, the call tomorrow? I will share that with you. And if you don't get on the call, I'm going to let you know how you might stay on top of things because, wow, they just keep filling up even though they have added more phone lines. First, we're not quite where we were before the dip. Uh, XRP did flip Doge, but the global market cap is sitting at 1.7 trillion. Compare that to the all time high of 2.5 four trillion so we've got a ways to go still to get the money back into the market however in the top 50 okay 50 by market cap in the last 24 hours if you own ethereum binance coin the cardano doge dot bch litecoin link ethereum classic v chain theta matic tron EOS, OKB, Hyobi, Uniswap, Aave, Neo, Cosmos, Maker, Tezos, Cellulus, Celsius, <laughs> NEM, Solana, or Filecoin. Congratulations, because you're up significantly, like big double digit gains. And if you happen to have gone in for the dip, wow, like a double congratulations to you. All right, here you can see that this is the SBI liquidity market. They are a market maker and they chart the price range predictions. This is one from May 19th to May 20th in the pink. You can see this is the 90% projected price range, but the red is the XRP actual. What I want to say here is that there are so many factors of price action and that you just can't forecast it. Not only sentiment, but also you have action that is taken by whales and that just doesn't chart. And what was interesting is I listened to an interview with Gary Gensler and he was talking about how very soon we're gonna see AI be able to impact the uh, range of sentiment that has a direct influence on price very soon here. I can't wait to see the AI tools. I, I, I just think it's going to be amazing how AI is going to be used in prediction and the fact that it will track interviews given either live through stream or that get uploaded and then have an immediate impact on the marketplace it's very very interesting to think about that all right i want to play this video for you you're going to be very surprised this is with the former u.s treasurer and the newest ripple board member rosie rios she was interviewed by nbc lx and wow what an endorsement have a listen well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple, and the reason why I chose to, to join that board is, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. That's interesting, because I actually interviewed someone from Ripple yesterday, so kind of full circle here. To so one of the few cryptocurrencies that have a legitimate and credible use case. I don't think it gets any better than that. And if you are wanting to know what else Rosie is up to, this is quite interesting. She's part of a new television series called The Unicorn Hunter. It's very similar to Shark Tank, that style where startups and pre-IPO companies can pitch their business model to receive a round of funding. Co-founder 
uh, or yeah, the Apple co-founder, Steve Wozniak is on the panel, so is Rosie. I think if you are interested, you can see the very first episode in its entirety on YouTube. I watched, it's really a very good program. I think it's gonna be quite successful. All right, that other Ripple employee that NBC LX interviewed, that was the GM, Monica Long of Ripple. I want to play this for you where she talks about the use of cryptocurrencies are rapidly uh, growing. There was really a watershed moment with the bursting open up the floodgates into the mainstream for crypto with companies like Tesla and Square and Visa um, taking this seriously and, and really embracing crypto and crypto products for their consumers. We're going to see that just really take off in the next one to five years. And the, the G5, decentralized finance uh, vision that, that we were just talking about, where we're making finance more accessible and more democratized for more people, uh, I think that will really take off. Yeah, I think she is right. And I also want to say in regards to DeFi that many of the XRP holders are going to be the envy of this space with the free pass to participate using Flare. I expect it's going to be one of my greatest highlights of 2021. All right, let me now share with you something that Darren Moore uploaded today. He is, of course, that amazing researcher, and he is a researcher who gets his he gets his he gets in there and and works out the uh, new technologies. Uh, he, he sent me an, F, uh, an NFT very early in the days where NFTs were, I, I, I remember saying to myself, what is this? <laughs> but he is one of those guys who does a lot more than just read headlines. And he uploaded the video today with John Deaton. And I want to play this one portion for you because it is uh, overlapping into my world. And also it uh, has a really good chance to be featured, hopefully, uh, should the XRP uh, holders be able to intervene. It might be used as a, as a use case example where XRP's utility stands on its own and doesn't need ripple to be utilized. Have a listen. There is that, that company developer Spin the Bits. I don't know if, you, if you've heard of them. Uh, but what, what they do is um, exactly what you just said. They basically use XRP to move the Bitcoin because of the speed and because of the cost. So Darren, think about this for a minute, right? This is what I'd love to tell the judge if I get the opportunity. So a company like Spendabits or even Darren is going to use the XRP ledger and XRP to transfer other coins because of its cost is so low and its speed. So they move Bitcoin from one place to another using XRP. If the SEC is correct, then what that means is the underlying asset, Bitcoin, is not a security. But the product that's being used to transfer it is a security. I mean, that sums it up to me. You know what I mean? And that's basically what you were saying that you've individually used it as, right? Yeah, yeah, I use it all the time. Uh, you know, if you need to move something quick or, uh, to an exchange or something, why, why use uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Even if that's what I'm looking for is an Ethereum pair or something, I'll still sell the XRP for Ethereum to buy the, the altcoin that I want. So it's, you know, I really do use XRP. Yeah, he really does use XRP and it does, you know, why would you use the Bitcoin chain or the Ethereum chain to move those assets? It just doesn't make any financial sense or timely sense either. And, you know, I joined the team at Spend a Bits back in September uh, 2020, and I'm really thrilled that John Deaton understands how amazing XRP and the ledger is. Yeah, we're bringing a solution to Bitcoin that, you know, it's not perfect in terms of solving all of its carbon footprint, but it does really 
solve the problem when it comes to moving the digital asset. This app is up and running in Canada and it is expanding. And I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm really proud to be part of this group that is um, improving on uh, the Bitcoin chain, actually, because Lightning didn't solve that problem at all. Uh, no matter what you tell me, you can you can just tell me that a pre-funded uh, side chain is the way to do it. I don't think so, especially when both parties have to be uh, present and live and opened up at the same time. I mean, and and the the funding of those channels is just not realistic at all. So anyway, I'm not going to get. Uh, sidetracked on that. But what I will tell you is that I'm going to uh, do a little bit more on that in a video this week. And I'm going to illustrate how using XRP and the XRP ledger yeah, is solving some of that BTC energy use. So this is a very positive thing. All right. I want to tell you that tomorrow, uh, East Coast time at uh, what is it? 2 p.m. Right. There is going to be the SEC versus Ripple conference call, and it will be the motion to compel Ripple to turn over the documents regarding legal advice. And uh, you can call in on this number here for the United States. And if you want to jot that down, or if you're an international caller, you've got this 409 207-6997. The code is 4934010. And it looks like the pound sign after. Um, I don't know if they're going to have enough uh, lines on uh, available for everyone to get on. So if you don't get on, I wanted to let you know that the at ISO underscore XRP said he's going to be tweeting live, not recording, but he'll be tweeting out. So if he gets on and, and is able to tweet out, uh, and you should uh, be able to at least stay on top of things live if you can't get on. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm gonna guess they don't have enough lines. All right, everybody, we're jumping to the fluff and this is a really good fluff. I am telling you, yeah, since um, Thursday, there has been, a very big tournament in this 88,000 square foot skate park in Des Moines, Iowa. That's the state of Iowa in the United States, the capital city and, uh, of, of Iowa, the country's largest actually skate park and the youngest professional athlete was there who is uh, sponsored by Nike. And yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's very, very interesting because there's just a lot of coverage of sports going on in Japan because of, of the coming Olympics. And it did mention, too, there's been some articles that the high school students in Japan are rapidly losing interest in sumo. <laughs> there are three words that come up repeatedly in an athletic federation study that they did. Painful, scary and naked. <laughs> so the sumo clubs in Japan are steadily dropping less than half of what they were uh, in 2003. Only 146 wrestlers now belong to a school club. And with the news that's happening, there were 19 Japanese skateboarders that held uh, a test event for the Olympics today. And that sport is really gaining popularity. And I think when the Olympics start on July, July 24th, the skateboard event is going to be very, very big. So this young athlete, the youngest ever that Nike has uh, chosen to sponsor, has made the Tokyo Olympics. Her name is Sky Brown, and she is a skateboard surfing prodigy, ranked third in the world, born in 2008 to a Japanese mother and a British father. So she splits her time between Japan and California. And when she's in Japan, she's living in Miyazaki. This is the surfing capital south of Tokyo on the southern island of Kyushu. 
and where yeah, this is where her family spends half the year and because they still own a home there but she's going to compete in the olympics representing the uk i can't wait to follow her progress when you go to her youtube channel with her brother ocean she gets millions of views and i'm going to put a link to her youtube channel in the description below and should you have a chance to watch the olympics and catch the skateboarding event yeah don't forget to look for sky all right everybody do take care sayonara for now bye bye